wire. Well, you can see it's been a busy week around here. All right. Yes. We had our prayer service on Wednesday evening and uh, had a wonderful time together of prayer. And just wanted to let you know that we removed all the prayers from the prayer wall. We prayed over each of them. So if you have a relevant prayer that you would still like on the wall, please rewrite it and post it there. We also um, want to thank those of you who participated in the AIDS Walk. If you were there at the AIDS Walk yesterday, raise your hand. Yes. Thank you. have that in mind too this morning. Um, also a reminder, membership class is today right after church. If you did not sign up, it's okay. You can still attend. And so uh, we look forward to that. And also, before the membership class, we are shooting a video today. And we have, you know, this partnership with the Circle MCC in Milan, Italy. And we have a Christmas gift for their pastor. And so we want to present that by video. So Judy uh, Marsh and her team will be helping coordinate us. So right after church, before we uh, recess, if everyone will come up here and we'll fill up the choir loft and all this area, and we <coughs> is going to shoot a video, uh, just a short video, we are going to send that to them for Christmas. And uh, hopefully we all will also hear back from them. So we'll do that this morning. Uh, lastly, you know, we were saddened by the news of uh, the death of our 41st president, George Bush. And so just remember him this morning with his, and his family and keep them in our prayers. Will you pray with me? Oh God, as we come together now in word, I pray that all that is heard and said and received this day will bring glory only to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, in 1962, Don and Carol Richardson moved to Western New Guinea to live among the Saudi people. And when they went, they arrived with their six-month-old son in their arms. And they didn't realize at the very, that at the time, the very act of carrying their infant child was a sign of peace to the Saudi people. To the Saudis had been a violent crime, a violent tribe, and uh, they had a history of cannibalism, and they were constantly at war with each other and other tribes. And so the Richardsons tried to teach them about peace. They explained to them the story of Jesus and highlighting values of love and forgiveness and peace. But the Saudis just couldn't get it. They had built so much into their culture this value of treachery and deceit that when they heard the story of Jesus, they thought Judas was the hero. And finally, the Richardsons, totally discouraged, after seeing the 14th bloody battle outside of their home, decided to leave. But the tribes had gotten accustomed to them and valued their presence there and the services they provided, and they didn't want them to leave. So each of the opposing tribes came together, and they staged a ceremony outside Don and Carol's home. And Don writes about this, and he said as they proceeded with this ceremony, it was very, very silent. Just total silence as they entered into this ceremony together. And then in the midst of this silence, the wife of the Saudi chief let out a loud scream because her husband took their six-month-old son and walked to the opposing chief and placed the child in his arms. And it was their custom that now this enemy chief would raise their child as his own, and then by mutual agreement, as long as this peace child lived, there would be no wars fought between those two tribes. It was then that the Richardson realized the similarity, similarities between the Saudi's custom of a peace child and our belief in Jesus as our peace child. As we begin this Advent season and celebrating the 200th anniversary of that song, Silent Night, we sing in that song about the birth of this special baby, the special Jesus, our peace child. Sleep in heavenly peace. So the first Christmas card I received, yes, the card's already coming in the mail. It had a dove on the outside, 
with an olive branch in its beak. And when you open the card on the inside, it says, Let all the world welcome the season of peace. So I wonder how did Advent become affiliated with the season of peace? Well, we heard the reading today from Isaiah, the prophet, about a child being born to us. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting One, Prince of Peace. We have come to believe in Jesus as God's gift to us, as God's peace child, come to bring peace. So during this season of Advent, I'd like to explore a little bit about what is peace and how do we obtain it? Well, there's the first obvious definition that peace is the absence of social conflict. Things like violence and crime and war. We heard this morning the story read about the World War I truce between the German and the English armies. And how the song Silent Night actually brought them together. And when I hear that story, it brings me so much hope that in the midst of war, there could be peace. And then as I thought about that story more, I realized, you know, it was really just one day in the beginning, in the beginning of a four long, four year long war. It was one day of truce out of 1,564 days. And on that Christmas Eve in 1914, yes, a few lives were spared on that one battleground. But over the course of four years, 8,500,000 soldiers would be lost. So we speak about peace, the very opposite being war, it's very disturbing to imagine that. So I wondered in 2018, is world peace possible? The Global Peace Index, or the GPI, is something I consulted, and it's a panel of international peace experts, and they annually measure and rate nations' peacefulness. And they rate not only the number of deaths in each country from war, but other factors, <coughs> such as homicides, violent crimes, the number of jail persons, imports and exports of weapons, etc. And countries receive a rating, either a very high peaceful rating in dark green on the map, or a very low rating in red. And looking at that, I found there are some encouraging places where peace is happening. So here's a map. And uh, in Australia, for example, very peaceful. Places like Portugal, 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 Denmark, and Ireland. But then, of course, there's some very discouraging places like Russia, Afghanistan, and Yemen. So then I start wondering, what about our own country? How do we rate on peacefulness during this Advent season? Of the 163 countries in the United States, the United States is unfortunately rated in the bottom third at number 121. Just one tenth of a point would have moved USA from the medium category to orange or low peacefulness rating. We rate behind Honduras, Jordan, and China. And I say this not to discourage us, but to remind us, maybe this is why we are discouraged about peace. For me, it was kind of a reality check. You know, our social experience in the United States is pretty non-peaceful. Sometimes it's even hostile. And it was kind of an answer to me why I often feel so frustrated. Maybe sometimes I feel anxious in our social context. And in the season of Advent, we realize that we desperately want and desperately need peace in our lives. And we need the peace of Advent to comfort our hearts 
And it is Advent that helps us to hold on to this hope that peace is possible. And it is possible. Our neighbor, neighbor to the north, Canada is one of the most peaceful countries in the world. And there are 78 other countries in the world that have high to very high peaceful ratings. And so today, as we start our Advent season, we pray. We continue to pray for people and for all countries that we may someday come to peace. That we may sleep in heavenly peace. The reality is the world into which Jesus was born was not a very peaceful place either. But yet, he made it his life, mission, and his work to live and breathe peace. And we can do that too. We can make peace our mission. And when we find amongst us, our churches or our communities torn and divided about many cultural contentions, when we find our families fighting, our politicians arguing, and things like ignorance and, ignorance and hate that is spread on the news and on the internet, we can do what we can to promote harmonious relationships. And I think about that true story that we read this morning, Christmas Eve 1914, and I pondered, who was that first German who began singing Silent Night. And who was that first brave English soldier that popped his head up at the risk of being shot? And who was that first brave German to stand up and wave and emerge without a weapon? And what Englishman climbed out of the dirt unarmed to accept <coughs> This offer to meet in no man's land. Who was the first to offer a handshake or give a gift? And then I wondered, who had the soccer ball? <laughs> in Christmas of 1914, I wonder if it had been up to those low-ranking soldiers. Maybe the war would have just ended that day. But because commander was the man of allegiance, and they instilled fear in those soldiers, and reminded them that consorting with the enemy was treasonous, the fighting and the killing resumed the very next day. So I ask ourselves, what fears are keeping us? What keeps us from a ceasefire with those people around us? And what keeps us from promoting peace and harmony, even with our own rivals? Gareth Diggins from Northern Ireland, who studied the conflict in his own country, today practices peace building. And he says this, there are lots of ways to prevent conflict. There are lots of ways to repair its consequences. There are lots of ways to build beloved community. And he says that in a polarized society, there may be no more effective way to prevent conflict and violence than to find ways to build bridges. And he suggests this. Get to know at least one person who votes differently than you. He says it's not necessarily easy, but it is necessary. And he says the history of conflict transformation proves that that works. He said start with someone with a different political view than yours. Someone that you feel comfortable and just get to know each other. This, he said, is the hard work. I think about the Franciscans. And they call peace an incarnational activity. We know their prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Our prayer 
this Advent season is that Jesus, our peace child, will help us to also be children of peace. Lastly, peace also depends on our own personal, internal tranquility and harmony. The monk Thomas Burton once said, we are not at peace with ourselves because we are not at peace, I'm sorry, we are not at peace with others because we are not at peace with ourselves. And we are not at peace with ourselves because we are not at peace with God. It truly is difficult to be kind and considerate and tolerant and respectful of others when we aren't that way with ourselves, when we aren't connected to God. So the Franciscans have this advice for an Advent activity I'd like to share with you this morning. They say, number one, take time each day and notice any negative attitudes you might have for yourself. And when they arise, Choose a positive affirmation to say to yourself, such as, I am a beloved child of God. Number two, to say, listen to your body. Notice any fear or anger that you feel. And take deep breaths. Imagine breathing out this negative emotion and breathing in the peace of Christ. Number three, which I think is a good one for this Christmas season, try to eat well, sleep enough, and exercise this week, and notice you find yourself more peaceful. <laughs> and number four, try fasting one meal or one day a week. And I would add, try fasting from the news. And use that time to spend it in prayer and peacefulness. So this season, as we engage together in this series, Calm and Bright, I pray that we will reconnect with Jesus as our peace child. <coughs> that we be mindful to experience and to promote in any ways that we can harmony and peace in our midst. This morning during our reflection time, we're going to invite you to come forward and light candles. And we'll be singing a song called Prayer, a Prayer for Peace. And as you come forward to light the candle, I invite you to do it uh, either in honor of uh, internal peace that you might be seeking today, maybe for peace in your relationships, somebody you're in conflict with, or light the candle for world peace. And uh, also with the big World AIDS Day yesterday, you may want to come and light a candle in memory and honor of someone from this World AIDS Day weekend. So we join with this as we sing and we invite you to come forward. <laughs> 